Hello everyone. Today we will be solving AQA GCSE Chemistry May 2020 Part 2. In this video we are going to be solving from question number 5 to question number 7. This question is about aluminium. Aluminium is a metal. Draw one line from each property of aluminium to the correct reasons for that property. So, first of all, the property of aluminium conducts electricity. Let's see the options. Aluminium has delocalized electrons. Delocalized electrons are the main reason why uh, any metal will conduct electricity. So delocalized electron is the main reason for conducting electricity. Next, high melting point. Aluminium has layers of atoms which can slide, all right, which makes it malleable. So not a reason for high melting point. Aluminium has strong metallic bonds. Strong metallic bonds are associated with high melting point because we're gonna need a lot of energy to overcome that high amount of energy needed to uh, you know break the bonds between the metal to melt it aluminium can be used to make alloys what is meant by an alloy well whenever we get a question for alloy alloy is a mixture of metals aluminium is extracted from bauxite bauxite is a mixture which contains aluminium oxide Bauxite contains between 15% and 25% aluminium. Aluminium oxide always contains 53% aluminium. How does this show that bauxite is a mixture and not a compound? Because bauxite contains a variable percentage of aluminium, that's why we can uh, you know, conclude that this is a uh, mixture. The waste material from bauxite is stored in lakes of mud. The lakes of mud are held in place by dams. Figure 6 shows one of these lakes. Suggest two possible problems with storing the waste materials in lakes of mud. Alright, we can see from the picture that if the dam collapses, this housing will also collapse with it. So, the danger of the dam bursting will be one of the uh, you know problem the other problem that can be is leakage of toxic substances from mud to the nearby surrounding environment water pollution for the surrounding environment can also happen damage to habitats visual pollution can happen all right and dam can block you know uh, light all right for the nearby uh, houses and reduces the value of the houses there can be unpleasant smell that can come from that particular mud however we only have options for two so we're gonna write only two Aluminium is extracted by electrolysis. Aluminium oxide is mixed with cryolite and melted. The mixture is then electrolyzed. The formula of cryolite is Na3AlF6. Give the total number of atoms in the formula. So we can see there are three sodiums. There is one aluminium and there is six fluorine. So total 10. What is the reason for adding cryolite to the aluminium oxide? We can see the cryolite is an impurity. So when we add impurity all right, to any pure substance, 
its melting point is lowered. Let's see the options. To increase the amount of aluminium extracted, no. To lower the melting point of the mixture, definitely. Complete the sentences. Choose answer from the box. When molten aluminium oxide and cryolite mixture is electrolyzed, the product at the positive electrode is. So the product at the positive electrode. All right. Positive electrode is going to attract negative ion. Okay. So definitely it's going to attract oxide ion. So oxygen will be produced. This product reacts with positive electrode because the positive electrode is made of carbon. We know that the uh, positive electrode in electrolysis of aluminium is made from carbon. So oxygen reacts with carbon to produce carbon dioxide. A sample of bauxite contains 25% aluminium. Calculate the maximum mass of aluminium that can be extracted from 300,000 kilograms of the sample of bauxite. Give your answer in standard form. So it contains 25% aluminium. So what we can do is we can make the 25% as 25 divided by 100. And then we're going to multiply it with 300,000, the mass of the sample. All right. This gives us a value of 75,000. All right. 75,000 kilogram. Since they want the answer in standard form, so we can write 7.5. Let's count one two three okay so total of four one two three four seven point five get into the power of four kilogram this question is about citric acid figure seven represents one molecule of citric acid Complete the molecular formula of the citric acid. Okay, so the number of carbon is already counted. We need to count the number of hydrogen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight hydrogen. And counting the number of oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so seven oxygens. What type of bonding is shown in figure seven? This bonding shown with a dash represents a covalent bonding. So covalent. Figure 8 shows two representation of one molecule of citric acid A and B. Okay. Give two advantages of presentation A compared with presentation B. So in presentation A, all the bonds, even double bonds and single bonds are nicely understood. All right. In presentation A, it is also shown that which elements are binding with which other elements. A student investigated the temperature change during the reaction between citric acid and sodium hydrogen carbonate solution. Citric acid is a solid. This is the method used. Pour 25 cm cube of sodium hydrogen carbonate solution into a polystyrene cup. Measure the temperature of the sodium hydrogen carbonate solution. Add 0.25 grams of citric acid to the cup. Stir the solution, measure the temperature of the solution, repeat steps 3 to 5 until a total of 2 grams of citric acid has been added. Table 4 shows some of the student's results. Okay, so we can see that the mass of citric acid is you know, increased in increment of 0 0.25 gram. And we can also see the temperature is decreasing. How do the results in Table 4 show the reaction is endothermic? So the answer will be temperatures is decreasing during the reaction three of the student results are plotted on figure 9 a line of best fit for these points are drawn complete figure 9 
Plot the data from table 4 on figure 9. Draw a line of best fit through the points we uh, you have plotted. Extend your line of best fit to meet the line of best fit already drawn on figure 9. Okay, so we can see the mass of citric acid added in here and we can see the temperature of the solution in here. Okay, so we just have to add few more values here. So for 00, zero our value was 22.6 so 22 and 0.6 will be here all right so we'll have to also draw a line of best fit to to meet the line of best fit that is already drawn okay so here we go determine the overall temperature change for the reaction to determine the overall temperature change for the reaction, we'll have to take the initial temperature, which is uh, 22.6 minus the final temperature, which is in this case 20.2 here. So temperature change is 2.4 degrees Celsius. What is the dependent variable in this investigation? So dependent variable of the in this investigation. So definitely dependent variable is, uh, you know, is the result, all right, in simple words. So in this case, the temperature of the solution is our dependent variable. Mass of the citric acid in this case is independent. and the volume of the solution is a constant variable question number seven this question is about acids bases and salts zinc nitrate is a salt a student produces zinc nitrate using an acid and a base which acid should the student use to produce zinc nitrate so if we are making nitrate then we will definitely need nitric acid which is a base the student could use to produce zinc nitrate. So if we want to use a base to produce zinc nitrate, zinc chloride is a salt, so cannot be used. Zinc sulfate is also a salt. So zinc oxide, remember guys, oxide, hydroxides, carbonates, they can be considered as base, so. Name the salt for the formula MgBr2. So this will be magnesium bromide. A student investigated how the pH changes during a titration. This is the method used. Pour 25 cm of hydrochloric acid into a beaker. Measure the pH of the hydrochloric acid with a pH probe. Add 1 cm of sodium hydroxide solution from a burette. Swirl the mixture. Measure the pH of the mixture. Repeat steps 3 to 5 until 30 cm of sodium hydroxide solution has been added. Figure 10 shows the student's result. So, we can see as we kept on adding the sodium hydroxide solution, the solution went from an acidic range, it jumped to an alkaline range, and then it plateaued. Describe how the pH of the mixture changes as sodium hydroxide solution is added to hydrochloric acid. So to answer a question like this, we'll have to consider in this way. When we are adding all right when we are adding the base the base is actually removing the hydrogen ion from the solution okay so uh, the description will be from 0 to 20 cm cube we can see there is a gradual change in gradual increase in ph okay there is a gradual increase in ph however at 20 cm cube the ph changes from we can consider like 3 directly to around like uh, 11 it just jumps okay but after that from 20 cm cube to 30 cm cube the ph again increases gradually
what volume of sodium hydroxide solution is needed to neutralize 25 cm cube of hydrochloric acid so neutralization occurs when the you know change in pH occurs very very fast so 20 cm cube of sodium hydroxide solution Figure 11 shows the color of universal indicator at different pH values. The student could have used universal indicator instead of a pH probe. Determine the color of universal indicator when 10 cm cube of sodium hydroxide solution has been added to 25 cm cube of hydrochloric acid. To do this, we will have to determine what is the pH at that particular point of time. So we can see the pH is, this is 1 and that is close to 1.3 okay so the pH is 1.3 so at 1.3 we're gonna see a red color the student used a pipette to measure 25 cm cube of hydrochloric acid the figure figure 12 shows the pipette the pipette is labeled 25 plus minus 0 0.06 cm cube calculate the percentage uncertainty in the volume measured using this pipette so when we are measuring uncertainty percentage uncertainty then we'll have to remember the percentage uncertainty given 0 0.06 and then the total volume that we are measuring is 25 multiplied by 100 gives us 0 0.24 percent So this is the percentage uncertainty when using a pipette of 25 cm cube. Give one advantage of using a pipette rather than using a measuring cylinder to measure the volume of hydrochloric acid. All right, so pipette measures the volume more accurately. Okay, all right. So measuring cylinder, the problem is it has a uh, you know greater percentage un uh, uncertainty. All right, which is why we are not going to use the measuring cylinder. Okay, guys, that's all for today's video. We have solved up until question number seven. Um, guys, uh, I'll be uploading videos like this regularly, all right? And, uh, you know, you can always help the channel by subscribing and letting your friends know, all right? And if these videos brings you to, brings you any value, all right? Uh, there are some students, those that contribute to the channel, all right? And if you want to contribute uh, in the form of some donations, all right, let me know in email, all right? Uh, and I'll definitely get back to you if there is any uh, problem all right that you face uh, on these particular answers all right definitely definitely in uh, you know, a write in the comments and I will try my best to give you the answers all right of your questions thank you so much all right see you in the next video best of luck with your exam bye bye